So I'm going to say something that's going to seem like I'm trolling, but I'm actually not. We're actually going to go ahead and overclock a couple of controllers, a PS4 controller and an Xbox One controller, and show you guys how I'm doing it. Let's get into this. So before we do the actual overclocking controllers, I want to have a really quick discussion about the input latency, input lag, and how to get the best controller input without having to actually do this as well. Um, if you're using a PS4 controller, DS4 controller, uh, whatever you want to call it, if you run it by Bluetooth, your input delay will be around 1.9 to 2.2, somewhere in that range, millisecond delay. Um, if you have that same controller plugged in, you're going to be sitting at around 10, 10 and a half milliseconds delay. So it actually is more advantageous to run Bluetooth. Um, that's why when Mutex was talking about having the Cronus and it inputting more input delay, um, the Bluetooth for the DS4 is actually phenomenal and it works very, very well for inputs. As far as the Xbox One controller goes, we're looking at 2.3, 2.5 um, wired and wireless. So really, it's not worth trying to run extra Bluetooth stuff if you have a wired Xbox One controller. But, I mean, or you could do that and have the freedom of having the controller in your hand without a wire, you know, keeping you tethered. But, I mean, that's just kind of a couple things I want to touch on before we get into how to actually install this and the changes. Um, so, as far as the changes that we're going to make. So, our goal here is to change the polling rate. The polling rate on a default controller for Xbox One and PS4 is both 250 hertz. So, that's 250 times per second that the controller is pinging the PlayStation or Xbox. Wherever you're setting your input... That's how many times is getting that signal. So we actually can increase that with some software. So what we're going to do is increase this from 250 times per second to 1,000 times per second. Literally four times more information being sent over the same wave, which means less input lag, usually around one millisecond or less by the time this is all said and done. So if you have a wired PS4 controller, you're potentially going to go from around 10 millisecond delay to around one millisecond delay or you know, half millisecond delay even. It's it's really powerful depending on the specific controller. And you really need to do it yourself to understand what we're talking about here. Um, but let's get into how this is actually done because it's actually fairly simple. So we're going to start with Xbox One controller as it is the most straightforward and most simple way to overclock a controller. So let's switch to my desktop and get this done. So moving to my desktop, what we're going to do is head over to the link in the description. Hit code, download zip. Then go ahead and extract that zip into a folder. With that extracted, we can then go into driver, setup. We're gonna plug our controller in. Controller's now on. Go down to USB, Xbox One controller. So at this point, we go ahead and open up setup. Here we have mice selected on the drop down. I'm going to plug this controller in. USB. Xbox One controller. So default rate is currently on, but we want to filter on device. Go ahead and hit rate. Default 1000. Also smart to hit install service as this will set up the service for you with all of the uh, driver files and things like that. And then go ahead and hit just restart on the controller. The controller will restart. Now, when I unplug this and plug it back in, hopefully it keeps the 1000 rate. So unplugged. Plug back in, on, kept the filter, kept the thousand rate, and now we have this controller essentially overclocked. Let's look at the PlayStation 4 controller and see how we do that, because there's a few more steps to that controller. Again, go ahead and follow that link in the description down below. Once there, ds4windows.zip, which if you're using a PS4 controller on the computer, you more than likely already have this installed, but go ahead and set this up. Extract, you know, or make a new folder either way. Now we're going to run PS4 Windows. I'm going to go ahead and plug my PlayStation 4 controller in.
For regular install settings and things like that, go ahead and hit just app data. Now you see I have the blue light. The blue light showing here. And now we have the ability to use this controller. So, now what we can hopefully do... The quirk with the PS4 controller is this, is you're using DS4 to virtualize it as an Xbox 360 controller to make it pretty much universal for the Windows platform. So what we're going to have to do is go ahead and hit this USB device, do the same thing, filter on, filter on, just do both. Default, switch that to 1000, switch that one to 1000 as well, and go ahead and hit restart. Alright, now at this point we can go ahead and unplug controller, plug it back in and hope for the best. We got it. And that is how that's done on the PS4 controller. Really simple, straightforward process. It works really, really well. Um, a couple of guys that I run with run controllers and they absolutely love the overclock controller. It totally changed your gameplay, made the controller way more responsive. It helped them in their movement. Really just an overall change in the game. But guys, if this video helped you guys out, give it a like. If you like me, give me a subscribe. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you around.